If you're like me, you probably saw a bunch of unboxing videos about the new Academy A10 kit, and you got really excited. I know I did. The detail looks amazing with fine scribe panel lines and raised rivet details, but looks aren't everything. Stay tuned, I'll show you what I mean. So I eagerly awaited for this package all the way from China, and I started working on it the day it got here. The parts are packaged well enough, and they do look amazing. Those unboxing videos were not lying. Anyways, let's get straight to the build. Let's start off with the cockpit and the seat. The seat has several parts which at first look like they're going to go together well. And the first few pieces do go together well. But then you have these two pieces that need to be added. A31 and A32. There's like no reference point on the back of the seat to tell you where they're supposed to go. No locator pins, nothing. There is this little detail on the back of the seat. And that's all you have to go on. So I attached these two pieces using that as a reference and just hoped for the best. The cockpit parts have an amazing level of detail. Now check this out. Here I'm comparing the cockpit detail with the Quinta Studio 3D printed decals for the Italeri kit, as well as a resin cockpit for the Hobby Boss kit. I think the detail on the Academy kit looks better than the resin cockpit. Good job, Academy. The seat is the only thing that I think they could have done better here. The decals for the cockpit aren't quite as detailed as the 3D printed decals, but they do the job. The problem is that they have to lay on top of all of the buttons and stuff that stick out. It takes a lot of patience and decal solution to get it to work. And if you're not careful, they will start to warp out of shape a little bit like they did for me. The first steps in the instructions are actually for the nose gear bay. It has a lot of good detail as well, but there are some pieces that aren't clearly illustrated in the instructions, so you have to do some dry fitting to make sure they line up where they're supposed to go. And this is where we start to run into some problems. The pieces that make up the walls of the bays have tabs that are supposed to fit into corresponding holes with the adjacent pieces. The problem is the tabs don't fit, like almost none of them do. I had to either cut off the tabs or sand them down or make the holes bigger to get it to work. Also, the instructions have you add the landing gear struts into the bays during these steps, but I checked the fit and I confirmed that you are able to add the landing gear later on so you don't break them off during construction. So that's what I did.
the cockpit didn't quite fit correctly when gluing it into the front of the fuselage. I'm not sure if this was me or the kit. It lined up perfectly on one side, but there was a bit of a gap on the other side. The nose gear bay didn't have any fit problems going into the fuselage, and the bottom of the fuselage fit pretty good too. I didn't need to use any filler there. The rear part of the fuselage is molded in one piece, which is really nice. And the fit is pretty good when connecting it to the front. But there was a little bit of material I had to scrape away to get it to fit snugly. And there was still a small gap on one side that I had to fill. Again, I'm not sure if this was me or the kit that caused that. The pieces joined together at a seam line. So if you do end up having to fill it, you'll want to rescribe that panel line. Also, because the back part is molded as a single piece, there are a few molding lines that you need to sand down. There were a few molding errors in my kit, including this nice strand of plastic that I had to clean up. For the flaps, the instructions don't really provide an option for displaying the model with the flaps down. They have locator pinholes in them that you have to line up with the inside of the wing. It is possible to glue them to the inside of the wing in a lowered position if you're careful. So I went ahead and assembled the wings without the flaps at first with the intention of adding them later. If you don't want to display the model with flaps down, then you do need to add them at this point before you glue the top and bottom of the wings together. Otherwise, they won't fit in there. Also, it's a good idea to sand down the back of the wing just a little bit. The thickness of the plastic kind of takes it out of scale, but it's not a lot of trouble to just sand that down. A nice option they give you is to allow the air brake thingies to be in the open position if you want. And if you're careful, you can leave them off until later so they don't get damaged. The inside of the main gear bays was a bit challenging for me. Maybe it's because I'm still kind of new at this, but the instructions weren't very clear to me. I screwed up a few parts, putting them in wrong at first, like this piece right here. I still have no idea if I did it right or not. It looks wrong to me, but I didn't see any other way to make it fit. Attaching the wings is also a little bit of a struggle. I had to use a file to make the slots wider for the wings to fit properly. If you don't open those slots, the wings won't fit at all. And if you open them too much, the wings have a potential of not sitting at the correct angle against the fuselage. So you got to be careful. Also, there's a part on the back of the wings that sits between the wings and the fuselage. And I decided not to add those while joining the wings because it allowed me to get a better glue joint between the wings and the fuselage.
I didn't have any problems putting together the tail section. It just needed a little bit of sanding on the seam lines and just a small amount of filler in a couple spots. The engine cover part is molded as a single piece and then you have to slide the insides of the engine into position after gluing them all together. I didn't really like how this worked because you don't have a lot of leverage to make sure there's good contact on the inside. I had to scrape a little bit off the contact point so that the front would sit properly. And even doing that, it wasn't perfect. The instructions say to add a 25 gram weight to the nose section because it's a tail sitter. I added some of these metal connector pin thingies, but I didn't weigh them to see if it was enough. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. But I had a feeling that might be the case, so when I was working on the gun, I did not attach it at this point and waited till the end, just in case I needed to shove more weight in there. Speaking of the gun, I drilled out some of the holes to make it look a little bit more 3D. The fit of the nose was okay. I've, I've seen worse. I didn't sand it or add any filler so you can see exactly how it fits with no work done. At this point, I went ahead and started working on the air brakes and the flaps. I drilled out some of these holes in the part that holds the brakes together because they look like they're hollowed out on the real airplane. With the flaps, if you glue the wings together without the flaps, they won't go in all the way, which wasn't a problem for me because I wanted to display mine in a lowered position.
The kit comes with several options for weapons and stuff. However, not all of them show up in the instructions, so you have to guess on a couple of them. I just went with weapons that are in the instructions to play it safe. Another thing I screwed up was adding this antenna piece thingy. The version that I was building isn't supposed to have it, but I wasn't paying attention. Oops. Also, for anybody building this model that is supposed to have it, the way it attaches to the fuselage is kind of stupid. There's these four little bumps on the fuselage, which I think are supposed to serve as like locator pins. But the problem is the antenna piece doesn't have any holes on the inside to fit into those. It has holes on the outside, but they are kind of worthless. They don't come into contact with the fuselage at all. You just have to eyeball it to make sure you get it on there straight. The canopy has a seam on the outside that needs to be sanded down. There's also a ridge on the inside of the canopy that's molded in, but don't sand that down, it's supposed to be there. This is the first time I've ever tried to use masks that have been pre-cut and I have to say, these are amazing. They fit perfectly around all of the framing detail on the canopy and the windshield thingy. With about 80% of the construction done, it was time to move on to painting. I started off priming everything with Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. Once it was all primed, I used some Tamiya Flat White to create an uneven undercoat for the gray colors. For this paint scheme, it's Dark Ghost Gray and Light Ghost Gray. I use Mr. Color Lacquer Paints for those.
at this point i would have called this probably my best paint job i've ever done so far but i do screw it up later So it was at this point when my paint job started to fall apart. There's some spots that are hard to get to with the airbrush and because of that the paint gets really dry and gritty by the time it gets into those areas. Specifically between the trailing edge of the wings and the front of the engine intakes. I tried to remedy this by sanding it down which did help a little but it wasn't perfect. After I got all the color down I used a lacquer gloss from testers to coat the model. And I didn't notice it at the time because I really need glasses, but I got a whole lot of dust and fuzz and weird things in that gloss coat. And then I added a second coat on top of it with even more dust and garbage. So that was nice. I have no idea how I didn't catch it sooner. I should have sanded it down, but I didn't, I didn't see it at the time. But I learned my lesson. I'm going to make sure my paint booth is a lot cleaner for my next model. After adding the gloss coat, it was time to work on the decals. One of the first decals I applied was this one here on the bottom. I think they added it to fix a molding problem. There's supposed to be a panel here at the bottom, but only half of it is molded in because it straddles the two parts that are glued together. Other than that, the decals are pretty good, except there's a few that aren't as sharp as I would have hoped. Also, the instructions aren't super clear on why some decals have like the same numbers like there's two 36s that are completely different and so on there's several like that so pay attention and be careful when you apply your decals Once all the decals were done, it was time to add another layer of dust varnish, and then I added some panel washes. This is my first time painting a figure for a model. I just tried to copy what I've seen other people do, and I definitely need a lot more practice. To finish things off, I added all of the final details like weapons and landing gear. Speaking of weapons, for a lot of them you will need to make the attaching holes bigger or they won't fit onto the pylons correctly. I should have done some dry fitting before attaching the pylons. Lesson learned.
for the landing gear, here's another word of advice. Don't do what I'm doing here with the main landing gear. The instructions have you add the doors and the covers to the gear before attaching them to the bays. As you can see, I didn't do that. I just added the gear struts with the hope of adding the covers and doors after, and that caused some problems later on. I had to do some cutting and adjusting to make it work. I'm not sure how, but I got some panel liner on the inside of my windshield, which kind of sucks. I used some enamel thinner to try to clean it up as best I could, but it's a tight fit in there. After installing the landing gear, you get to find out if you added enough weight to the nose or not, and I didn't. Lucky for me, I didn't add the gun yet, so I shoved a whole bunch of those wire connectors in there until it stopped tail sitting. If you wait until the end to add the pilot to the cockpit, it's going to be really hard to get him to fit in there. For me, I couldn't get him to fit in there at all, so we had to amputate. But that's the end of the build. Here's how it turned out. This was actually a fun kit to build. Even though the quality isn't perfect and it does have some problems, I feel I can still recommend it for more experienced modelers. It goes together pretty quickly and with some patience. I think it does turn out okay. Just make sure you don't do a 50-50 mix of dust with your varnish layers like I did. These high definition images really show off how bad it looks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this build and that it was useful. If you did, leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would really help me out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.